Hey everyone, it's theCUBE live at VMware Explorer 2022. We're at Moscone Center in lovely, beautiful San Francisco. Dave Vellante is with me, Lisa Martin. Beautiful weather here today, It Dave. is beautiful, I couldn't have missed this one because you know, the orange and the pure and Vaughn, right. our history together, I had, yeah. to, I had to switch sets. Uh, you did, uh, you were going to have FOMO without yeah, it. Yeah, Guess yeah. who's back, one of our longtime alumni, Vaughn Stewart, VP of Global Technology Alliances Partners at Pure Storage. Vaughn, it's great to have you back on the program, seeing you in 3D. Uh, it's, it's so great to be here, and uh, we get a guest interviewer, so uh, <laughs> this is fantastic. Fly by. Yeah, right. <laughs> so talk to us, what's going on at Pure? It's been a while since we had a chance to talk. Right, well, well besides the fact that it's great to see everybody in person and to be back at a conference and see all of our customers, partners, and prospects, um, you know, Pure Storage has just been on a tear. Uh, just for your audience, many of those who don't follow Pure, Right, we finished our last year with our Q4 being 41% year-over-year growth, ending the year just under $2.2 billion, and then we come out of the gates this year, close our Q1 at 50% year-over-year quarter, quarterly growth. Have you ever seen a storage company or an infrastructure partner at $2 billion grow at that rate? Well, the thing that was, was striking was that the acceleration of growth, because you know, I mean, COVID, there were supply chain issues, and you, know, you saw that, and then, and we've seen this before at cloud companies, we see actually AWS has accelerated growth. So this is my premise here is you guys are actually becoming a cloud-like company building on top of, of infrastructure going from on-prem to cloud, but we're going to talk about that. But this is yeah. very much that super cloud premise. Well it is, and, and, but I think it's, it's it, it, one of the characteristics is you can actually, it, you know, we used to see companies, they go, they'd come out of escape velocity and then they'd, they'd, the growth would slow. I used to be at IDC, we'd see it, we'd see it, okay, down, and then it'd be single digits. You guys are seeing the opposite. Right. Well, it, it's not just our bookings, and by the way, I would be remiss if I didn't remind your audience that our second quarter earnings call is tomorrow. <laughs> so uh, we'll see how this Stay velocity tuned. and momentum keeps going. We'll see. Right. Um, but besides the growth, right, all the external metrics around our business are increasing as well. So our net promoter score increased, we're at 85.2. We are the gold standard, not just in storage, in infrastructure, period. Like there's no one close to us. 85, I mean well, that's like, that's a, like Apple. It's higher than, higher Apple. than Apple, it's Apple, yeah. higher than Tesla, it's higher than AWS shopping. Um, and if you look then at like our review of our products, Flash Array is the leader in the Gardner Magic Quadrant for, uh, for storage arrays. It's been there for eight years. Portworks is the leader in the GigaOM radar for native Kubernetes storage, yep. three years in a row. Like, it just, it's great to be at a company that's hitting on all cylinders, you know, uh, particularly at a time that's just got so much change going on in our industry. Yeah, tremendous amount of change. Talk about the, the VMware partnership from a momentum, a velocity perspective. What's going on there and some of the things that you're accelerating? Absolutely. Uh, so VMware is, is the, the oldest or the longest tenured uh, technology partner that we've had. Um, I'm about to start my 10th year at Pure Storage. It feels like it was yesterday when I joined. They were a, an alliance partner before I joined. And so not to make that about me, but that's just like, we built some of the key aspects around our first product, the Flash Array, with VMware workloads in mind. And so we are a, a co-development partner. Uh, we've worked with them on a number of projects over years of, of late, things that are top of mind is like the evolution of VVols, the NV, support for NVMe over fabric storage, more recently uh, SRM support uh, for automating DR with VVol deployments. Um, you know, and, and, and then our work around VMware ex extends to not just with VMware, they're really the catalyst for a lot of three-way partnerships. So uh, partnerships in, into our investments in data protection partners. Well, you got to support VADP for backing up the VMware space. Our partnership with NVIDIA, well, you got to support NVAI so they can accelerate bringing those technologies into the enterprise. And so it's, it's not just a, a, a you know, unilateral partnership, it's a bi-directional piece because for a lot of customers, VMware's kind of like a, touch point for managing the infrastructure. So how has that changed? Because you, you mentioned you know, all the, the, the previous days, it was like, okay, let's get make storage work, let's do the integration, let's do the hard work. It was kind of a race for the engineering teams yeah. to get there. All the storage companies would compete, and it was actually really good for the industry. Yeah, yeah. Right? It went from you know, really complex to much, much simpler. And now, with the Portworx acquisition, it brings you closer to the whole DevOps scene, and mm -hmm. you're seeing now VMware it's with its multi-cloud initiatives, yep. really focusing on you know, the applications and that, and that layer. So how does that dynamic evolve in terms of the partnership and, and where the focus is? So there's always, in the last decade or so, right, there's always been some amount of 
overlap or competing with your partnerships, right? Something in their portfolios, they're expanding, maybe, or you expand, you encroach on them. Mm. Um, I, think, I think two parts to, to how I would want to answer your question. The retrospective look. Uh, v, uh, VMware is our number one ISV from a, a partner that we, we turn transactions with. The bookings growth that I shared with you, you could almost say is a direct reflection of how we're growing within that, that VMware marketplace. We are bringing a platform that I think customers feel uh, services their workloads well today and gives them the flexibility of what might come in their cloud tomorrow. So you look at programs like our Evergreen One subscription model where you can deploy a consumption-based subscription model, so very cloud-like, where you only pay for what you use on-prem and turn that dial as you need to dial it into a cloud or, or multiple clouds. Uh, that's just one example. Looking forward, the Portworx is probably the platform that VMware should have bought because when you look at today's story, right, when Kit Colbert shared a, a cross-cloud services, right, it was, it was the modern version of what VMware used to say, which was, here's a software-defined data center, we're going to standardize all your dissimilar hardware. Now they're saying, software-defined management to standardize all your dissimilar clouds. We do that for Kubernetes. We talk about accelerating customers' adoption of Kubernetes, by, by allowing developers just to turn on and enable features, be it security, backup, high availability, but we don't do it mono, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a homogeneous environment. We allow customers to do it heterogeneously, so I can deploy um, uh, VMware Tanzu and connect it to Amazon EKS. I can switch one of those over to Red Hat OpenShift non-disruptively if I need to, right? So as customers are going on this journey, particularly the enterprise customers, and they're not sure where they're going, we're giving them a platform that standardizes where they want to go on-prem, in the cloud, and anywhere in between. And what's really interesting is our latest feature within the Portworx portfolio is called Portworx Data Services. It allows customers to deploy databases on demand, like install it, download the binaries, you have a, there, you got a database, you got a database, you want Cassandra, you want Mongo, right? <laughs> yeah. you know, and for a lot of enterprise customers, who've kind of not, not know where to, don't know where to start with Portworx, we found that to be a great place where they're like, I have this need inside of my infrastructure. You can help me reduce costs, time, right, and deliver databases to teams. And that's how they kick off their Tanzu journey, for example. It's interesting, so Portworx was the enabler. You mentioned that maybe VMware should have bought, but of course they had to get the value out of, out of Pivotal. Uh, right? Understood. So, okay, <laughs> okay, so that, so how, so, uh, subsequent to the Portworx acquisition, how has it changed the way that you guys think about storage, and how your customers are actually deploying and managing storage. Sure. So you touched base earlier on what was really great about the cloud and VMware was this evolution of simplifying storage technologies, usually operational functions, right? Making things simpler, more API driven, right? So they could be automated. Uh, I think what we're seeing customers do to today is, uh, first off, there's a tremendous rise in, in everyone wanting to do every customer, not every customer, a large portion of the customer base wanting to acquire technology on, as OpEx. And it, I think it's really driven by like eliminate technical debt. I signed a short term agreement, our, short, our shortest commitment is nine months. If we don't deliver on what we say, you walk away from us in nine months. Like you, you couldn't do that historically. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, I think customers are looking for the flexibility, so our subscriptions, you know, more from between on-prem and cloud as I shared earlier. Um, is, is been a, a, a big driver in that space. And, and lastly, I would probably touch on um, our environmental and sustainability efforts. You saw this morning Ragu in the keynote okay. touch on, what was it, zero carbon consumption initiative or ZCCI, my apologies to the VMware folks if I misspoke. Um, you know, we've, had, we've had sustainability into our products since day one. I don't know if you saw our inaugural ESG report that came out about 60 days ago, but the bottom line is, is, is our portfolio reduces the, the power directly consumed by storage arrays by up to 80%, and another aspect to look at is that 97% of all of the products that we've sold in the last six years are still in the market today. They're not being put into, you know, into to recycled bins and whatnot. Pure storage's goal by the end of this decade is to further drive the efficiency of our platforms by another 66%. Uh, and so, you know, it's an ambitious goal, but we believe it's important. Yeah, I was at HQ earlier this month, so I actually did see it, so. Yeah. And where is sustainability from a differentiation perspective, but also from a customer requirements perspective? I'm talking to a lot of customers that are putting that requirement when they're doing RFPs and whatnot on the vendors. 
I think we would like to all, and this is a, a free form vom comment here, so my apologies, but I think we'd all like to, to believe that we can reduce the energy consumption in the planet through these efforts. And in some ways, maybe we can. What I fear in the technology space that I think we've all, and, and many of your viewers have seen is, there's always more tomorrow, right? There's more apps, more vendors, more offerings, more, more, more data to store. And so I think it's really just an imperative, is you've got to continue to be able to provide more services or store more data in, this, in yesterday's footprint tomorrow. And, and part of the way they get to is through a sustainability effort, whether it's in chip design, you know, uh, storage technologies, et cetera. And, and unfortunately, it's, it's, it's something that organizations need to adopt today. And, and we've had a number of wins where customers have said, I thought I had to evacuate this data center, your technology comes in, and now it buys me more years of time in this in infrastructure. And so, it can be very strategic to a lot of vendors who think their only option is like data center evacuation. So, uh, I, I don't want to, I, I don't want to set you up, but I do want to have the super cloud conversation. And Let's so, go. And you can, you, you've been around a long time, you're, you're technical, or you're more technical than I am, so we can at least sort of try to figure it out together. When I first saw you guys, I think Lisa, you and I were at, was it, when did you announce uh, block storage for uh, AWS? The, was that 2019? Cloud block storage, I believe Cloud it was four years ago. So, okay, so 2018. 2018. 2018. Okay, so we were there at, um, at, Accelerate. at, at Accelerate. And I said, oh, that's interesting. So basically, if I, if I go back there, it was, it was a hybrid model. You, you're connecting your on-prem. Right. You, were, you were using, I think, uh, priority EC2 mm -hmm. you know, infrastructure to get high performance and connecting the two. And right. it was a singular experience yeah. between on-prem and AWS in a, in a pure customer saw pure. Right. Okay. So that was the first time I started to think about super cloud. I mean, I think thought about it in different forms years ago, but that was the first actual instantiation. So I, my, my, I'm interested in how that's evolved, how it's evolving, how it's going across clouds. Um, can you talk just conceptually about how that architecture is, is morphing? Sure, I, I, um, just to set the expectations appropriately, right? We've got, we've got a lot of engineering work that, that's going on right now. There's a bunch of stuff that I would love to share with you that I feel is right around the corner, and so okay, hopefully so we'll get tuned. across the line. That's but cool. but where we're at today, share. but where we're at today, um, so the connective DNA of, of flash array on-prem, cloud block store in the cloud, we can set up for, for you know, what we call active DR. Uh, so, so again, customers are looking at these arrays as, as, a, as, a, as a pair that allows workloads to be uh, put, into the, put into the cloud or, or transferred between the cloud. Um, uh, that's kind of like your basic building, you know, blocking, tackling, one-on-one. Like, what do I do for DR, example, right? Or, or give me an easy button to, to evacuate a data center. Um, where we've seen a, a, a lot of growth is around Cloud Block Store, and Cloud Block Store really was released as like a software version of our hardware array on-prem. And it's been, and, and it hasn't been making the news, but it's been continually evolving. Um, and so today, the way you would look at Cloud Block Store is, is really bringing enterprise data services to like EBS for, for AWS customers or to like you know, Azure Premium Disk for Azure users. And what do I mean by enterprise data services? It's, it's the, the, the way that large scale applications are managed on-prem, not just their performance and their availability considerations, how do I stage the, um, the development team, the sandbox team before they patch, you know, what's my cyber protection? Not just data protection, how, how am I protected from a cyber hack? Um, we bring all those capabilities to those storage platforms, and the, the best result is because of our data reduction technologies, which was critical in reducing the cost of flash 10 years ago, reduces the cost of the cloud by 50% or more, and pays, for the, for, pays more than pays for our software of Cloud Block Store to enable these enterprise data services to give all these rapid capabilities like instant database clones, instant you know, recovery from cyber attacks, things of that nature. Do customers, we heard today, the cloud chaos. Are, are, yeah. are customers saying, so okay, you can run on Azure, you can run on AWS, fine. Are customers saying, hey, we want to connect those islands? Are you hearing that from customers, or is it sort of, sort of still too early? I think it's still too early. It doesn't mean we don't have customers who are very much in, let's buy, let me buy some software that will monitor the price of my cloud and I might move stuff around. Mm -hmm. But there's also a cost to moving, right? The egress charges can add up, particularly if you're at scale. So um, I don't know how much I've seen, and even through the cloud days, how much I saw the, the notion of workloads moving, like 
remember kind of in the early days like vMotion, we thought there might be like a, is there going to be a follow the moon computing, you know, surge here? Like, you know, have your workload run where power costs are lower? We didn't really see that come to fruition. So I think there is a, is a desire for customers to have standardization because they gain the benefits of that from an operational perspective. Right. Whether they put that in motion to move workloads back and forth, I so think let's say, that's let's say, to be determined. Let, let's, say they, let's say they don't move them because yeah. to your point, you know, it's too expensive. But, mm -hmm. but, but, but you just, I think, touched on it is they do want some kind of standard in terms of the workflow. Yep. You're, you're saying you're, you're starting to see demand. Standard for operating type. practices. Yes. Okay. Yeah, SOPs. And if they're, if they're big into pure, why wouldn't they want that? If, assuming they have yeah. you know, multiple clouds, which a lot of customers do. I, I, I'll show you one thing. The, the, going back to like basic primitives, and I touched, it, touched on it a minute ago with data reduction, you have customers look at their, their storage bills in the cloud and say, we're going to reduce that by half or more. You have a conversation. Because they can bring your stack yeah. into the cloud, and it's got more maturity than what you'd find from a cloud company. Cloud well, vendor. yeah, just data reduction's not part of block storage today in the cloud, so we've got an advantage there that we, we bring to bear. Yeah. So here we are at, at VMware Explorer, the first one of this name, and I love the theme, the center of the multi-cloud universe. Doesn't that sound like a Marvel movie? <laughs> I feel like there should be superheroes walking around here at some point. Yeah. Maybe we got there are. We got Mr. Uh, Fantastic yeah. right here. We do. Yeah. <laughs> Don is Thor. I don't know. Maybe. But a lot of a lot of uh, news this morning in the keynote. You were in the keynote. What are some of the things that you're hearing from VMware, and what excites you about this continued evolution of the partnership with Pure? Yeah, great point. Um, so I, I think I touched on the, the two things that really caught my attention. Obviously, you know, we've got a lot of investment in vRealize that was now kind of rebranded as Airy. Um, that, you know, I think we're really eager to see if we can help drive that consumption a bit higher. Because um, we believe that plays into our favor as a vendor. We've, we've, we have over a hundred templates for the Airy platform right now. To, you know, automation templates, whether it's, you know, level set your platform, you know, automatically move workloads, deploy on demand, like just, it's so, so again, the, I think the focus there is very exciting for us. Uh, obviously, when they've got a new release like vSphere 8, that's going to drive a lot of channel behavior, so we've got to get our, you know, we're a 100% channel company, and so we've got to go get our channel ready because with about half of the updates of vSphere is, is a hardware refresh, and so, you know, we've got to be, be prepared for that. So, you know, some of the excitement's about just being able to find more points in the market to do more business together. Mm. All right. Exciting Cover the stuff. grounds, right? I mean, um, so, okay, you guys announce earnings tomorrow, so we can't, obviously, quiet period, but of course you're not going to divulge that anyway. So we'll be looking for that. What other catalysts are out there that we should be paying attention to? Um, you know, we got, we got reInvent coming up in, yep. in November. You guys are obviously going to be there in, in a big way. Uh, Accelerate was back this year. How was Accelerate? Accelerate it was in Los Angeles this year. Mm. Uh, we had great weather, it was a phenomenal venue, great event, great partner event to kick it off. Mm -hmm. um, we happened to, to share the facility with um, the president and a bunch of international delegates, so um, that did make for oh. a little bit of some logistical challenges. Yeah. <laughs> it was like the Summit of the Americas, I, I believe I'm recalling that correctly. Um, but, but it was fantastic, right? You, you, get to, you get to bring the customers out, you get to put a bunch of the engineers on display for the products that we're building. Um, you know, one of the you know, two of the highlights there were we, we announced our new Flashblade S, so you know, higher, more performant, more scalable version of our our scale at object and file platform. With that, we also announced the the next generation of our uh, uh, Airy A I R I, uh, which is our AI ready re, uh, AI ready infrastructure mm -hmm. with Nvidia. Nvidia. So think of it like converged infrastructure for AI mm -hmm. workloads. Mm -hmm. um, we're seeing tremendous growth in that unstructured space, and so you know, we, obviously Pure was founded around block storage, a lot around virtual machines. The data growth is in unstructured, right? We're just seeing, we're seeing, you know, just tons of machine learning, um, you know, opportunities, a lot of uh, opportunities. Whether we're looking at uh, health life sciences, genome sequencing, medical imaging, uh, we're seeing a lot of, of, of velocity in the federal space. You know, things I can't talk about, a lot of velocity in the automotive space. And so they just, I, you know, from a completeness of platform, you know, flat, Flashblade is, is really addressing a need, really kind of changing the market from NAS as like tier two storage or object as tier three to like both as a tier one performance mm -hmm. candidate. And now you see applications that are supporting running on top of object, right? All your analytics platforms run on object yeah, today. Totally. So it's a, it's a whole new world. Awesome. And Pierce also got, I see on the website, a, a tech fest going on. 
You guys are going to be in Seoul, Mexico City, and Singapore in the next week alone, so customers get the chance to be able to in person talk with those execs once again. Yeah, we've been doing the Accelerate Tech, uh, tech Fests, sorry about that, uh, around the globe, and uh, if one of them is aligned with your schedule or you can free your schedule to join us, I would encourage you. Uh, the whole list of events, dates are on purestorage.com. I'm looking at it right now. Vaughn, thank you so much for joining Dave and me. I got to sit between two dapper dudes. Great conversation about what's going on at Pure. Pure with VMware, better together, and the, and the, catalyze, the cat, catalysis that's catalyst? going on on both sides. I think that's an actual word. I should know I have a degree okay. in biology. Yeah. <laughs> for Vaughn Stewart and Dave Vellante, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE live from VMware Explorer 22. We'll be right back with our next guest, so keep it here. <laughs>